if you are a farmer or a smallholder, the chances are you've heard your vet bang on about colostrum in the run up to and during lambing and calving. So at this point you are probably well aware of just how important it is. Nonetheless, I thought I'd make this quick video just to explain what colostrum is and how it exerts its beneficial effects. So colostrum, also known as first milk or bee stings if you like, is that milk that is produced in the run up to female mammals giving birth. That is so it's there, ready for the offspring's first feed. How does it differ from normal milk? The first thing you'll notice are its physical qualities. So it is thicker and it is yellower. Together with the really important roles it plays in nourishment and immune function, this is why colostrum is often given the very apt name of liquid gold. In terms of its roles, let's start with nourishment. This one can be easy to forget when we get carried away with the immune role colostrum plays, but it's still really very important. Any type of milk could be considered a superfood. It hydrates, it's energy dense, it's nutrient dense, and so on. Colostrum is much the same, and the exact percentages and composition will vary by species, by breed, by age, but generally the energy and protein levels are going to be even higher than for regular milk. A good feed of this nutrient dense meal is just what the newborn needs when it's making that transition from the highly stable, highly controlled environment of its mother's uterus into the highly unstable and challenging real world. Newborns are born with a small amount of what we call brown fat. That is an energy reserve designed to generate heat when they need it, but typically this is depleted within days, if not hours. Colostrum is what's going to carry them through after that brown fat has been depleted. The second role, and this is the big one, is immune function. On the nourishment front, colostrum is quite like normal milk, but more, more energy, more protein. This is a fundamental difference. Newborns are born with an immature immune system, the immune system being the body system that protects us from infectious disease. Some species, humans for example, are able to absorb a small amount of antibodies from their mothers over the placenta. Antibodies being proteins produced by the immune system that are designed to bind to and neutralize infectious bugs and their products, thereby protecting the host. Just to confuse things, antibodies are also called immunoglobulins, or for short, IGs, and can be called gamma globulins. But ruminants don't even get this. When they're born, they have zero antibody in their system. We call this a gamma globulinemic. And don't ask how many takes it took me to say that correctly. So from an immune point of view, they are born completely naive. To fill this immune gap, ruminant mothers flood their colostrum with antibodies from their own bloodstream. And due to a quirk in the newborn's gut, they are able to absorb these antibodies whole right into their bloodstream. Normally when proteins are ingested, they are then digested and broken down into their constituents, amino acids, thus losing their structure and thus losing their function. They are able to absorb antibodies in this way for the first 24 hours or so. Remember, antibodies are specific, so an antibody for coronavirus won't do much if it meets rotavirus, or an antibody for rotavirus won't do much if it meets E. coli. So the profile of antibodies in that mother's colostrum matches the environment and so the challenges which that newborn is going to meet. Very clever. This means of absorption provides the newborn with a big dose of antibodies to protect it until its own immune system gets going. This process is known as passive transfer of maternal immunity, often shortened simply to passive transfer. Finally, there's everything else. Colostrum has a laxative effect, encouraging the newborn to pass the meconium. There are also lots of bioactive compounds in colostrum. For example, lactoperoxidase, that has an antibacterial effect. Lactoferrin also has an antibacterial effect by binding iron and some of the receptors that viruses and bacteria would normally latch onto. I suspect there are many more of these bioactive compounds that we have simply yet to identify or fully understand. That is a quick run through of what colostrum is and why it is so very important. Keep your eyes peeled for more videos coming soon on the management and measurement of colostrum on farm. In the meantime, if you like that, give the video a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and if you haven't already, click the subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it, that means you get notifications about new videos. Otherwise, I will see you for the next video.